OK, Nick and Andy, massive game in North London this weekend. Arsenal against Liverpool, two title hopefuls going head to head, two Premier League giants colliding. Thoughts on this game, Nick Mendola, because for one team, they probably are relishing this opportunity. For the other, it's kind of come at a bad time. Help me out. Who am I talking about here? Uh, I don't know. No, <laughs> this is a intense period for Arsenal. Uh, I, I, I just don't know what to do with them right now. I don't think they're bad, uh, but the point isn't to be bad. The point is to contend for a Premier League title. And there have just been too many off performances from from a good good team. And I know there's they've had injuries, uh, especially one to us. Well, two to significant players. Odegaard's missed time. Saka's been a question mark. I don't think he's been at his best. But it just feels like they really need a moment. And I don't know that there would be a better moment than telling Liverpool to slow its roll. Andy, Liverpool look good. This seems like a good opportunity for them to just underline the incredible start to the season they've had under Arno Slot. I mean, 11 wins in 12 games in all competitions setting all kinds of records. Yes, you can talk about the strength of schedule, the rest of it, but yeah. as a new manager, all the pressure, replacing Klopp, having some uncertainty around some of his big stars as well. Couldn't have gone much better for him, could it, ahead of this big game? Yeah, uh, Nick talks about don't know what to do with Arsenal. I kind of don't know what to do with Liverpool yeah, at yeah. the moment because uh, they're top of the table, obviously. you know They've been the best team so far results-wise. But the performances haven't quite been there. And that's fine because we've seen City play at an incredibly high level already this season. We've seen Arsenal play at an incredibly high level. I think we're seeing maybe Chelsea ascend to playing, and, and not for, for title purposes this season, yeah, yeah. but we're seeing them go to a very, very high level, all of which probably performed better at their peaks this season than Liverpool. But for Liverpool, the strength has been the consistency. There's been no fall off. There's been no bad performances. There's been no games where you could say, well, they got away with all of that. They should have gotten nothing from that. And, and so it's it's tough to know if, I think it is, exactly what Arnie Slot wants from this team to be more predictable is the wrong word because that has a negative connotation. Uh, but 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 to be more familiar, I, I guess, to, to just the way that they're going to play and, and take some of the variables out of it. That's one thing that stuck out to me a little bit uh, from from their last game, from their game last weekend, was it got really open with Chelsea for a time, and we've not seen that from Liverpool this season. And I think I said to you guys, this kind of feels like Klopp's team playing a little bit right now because of how quick the game got open and it almost got away from them. And so there's striking that balance between the two. It's been incredibly fun to watch. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see if there's more to come from them this season or if this is just kind of the best that they are going to be able to do, I guess. Yeah, it seems like, like you mentioned, Liverpool's ceiling isn't as high as Arsenal's, but basically, if they struggle, then it's not going to be as low as Arsenal right now. I spoke to Thomas Party after their shock defeat against Bournemouth last weekend. We know that the William Saliba red card imp impacted that, of course, but... In before that, like Nick mentioned, sluggish displays, defensively, David Raya, Ben White, just, again, not quite looking like Arsenal, like they have done for the last two seasons, and be that down to fatigue. I asked Thomas Partey about that and said, you know, are you just struggling with the load of, you know, you've got a core group of guys there, but you've just been rolled out time and time again the last few months. And he was like, well, obviously, you know, didn't want to blame the injuries, but you could tell. He said it's impacting our confidence a little bit. I think on the pitch, there are times when they do need a Saka. They do need an Odegaard to get on the ball. They haven't had that recently. Um, and they are a very good team, but those two or three key players that they've had and mostly been available for all of the last two seasons, right, are a big reason why they've been title contenders consistently under Mikel Arteta for the last two years. So uh, Arsenal are in a tough spot, Nick Mendola. I think defensively especially, what are they going to do at the back? Because Calafiore went down. <laughs> You've got all kinds of other injuries. Saliba being suspended. Uh, Urien Timber, Tom Yasu, Ben White. Is he going to be ready to go? I mean, are we going to see a situation where maybe Thomas Partey's playing right back? Are we going to see Kivior come in at centre-back? I mean, he's pretty much their last man standing at centre-back. It's, it's difficult for Arteta right now. And he's to be fair, he's not really blaming the injuries. But you can understand... If he did, right? Because this is quite unprecedented for like this area of the pitch to be hit this hard at the same time. 
Well, it is a quick path to injuries when you only got 10 guys going up against 11. But <laughs> a joke, a joke. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I think the answers aren't there for them when a big piece is missing so far. That isn't to say that happens every time. It's not. Arsenal are a fantastic team. But until I see the lineup, I won't be able to tell you that I feel Arsenal are going to be able to be in control of the game, especially because we've seen Liverpool control a game. And not to spin it right back on Liverpool, but you made a point that kind of cemented this thought for me, Joe. You mentioned that we hadn't seen, and Andy too, uh, because I think you wrote about it even, we hadn't seen Liverpool bend this open. And you were like, there were moments where it felt like it could have gotten away from them. But you know what? It didn't get away from them. And that's a learning experience to play that way. And there's a little bit of muscle memory, isn't there? Yeah, no, it's not Jurgen on the sidelines saying, ah, and, and getting fired up. But you've done this before, and you've done it better than almost anybody in the world. So I don't know. I I might want to tell you that I think Liverpool is a bigger title contender than Arsenal right now. Yeah, I did also think it was it was interesting. The first kind of like fiery, you know, uh, challenging moment of the season that Liverpool came up against against Chelsea, they did muscle memory kind of revert back to mm-hmm. what had been familiar. You know, when we need to dig a little deeper, when we need to take the uh, the initiative in the game and take it to the other team, that's still in there. And, and I think that that's I hope that's something that slot at some point this season remembers he has in his back pocket and when the moment calls for it he turns to it maybe it's this game it it very well could be this game uh, against arsenal because because of the way that arsenal are going to have to commit to playing i I think we do to the injuries and everything and just you know kind of where their their talent is uh concentrated at least it's available at the moment and nick we said about it before this is an opportunity for liverpool right go into arsenal with all these injuries with seller in the form he's in with all the attack and midfield options they have i mean they can't really let this pass by if they're serious about winning the title this season. Um, it's crazy to say, but they they have to really win this one if they are going to be taken seriously because Arsenal and City are still the favourites and the last two seasons have proved why. But this is for Liverpool. I, I'm just looking at the team. It's, it's, it's big because do you go with someone like Curtis Jones who ran the show against Chelsea? Do you go with Alexis McAllister who's maybe slightly more defensive-minded but can still produce magic um and do you i guess go with nunez up top uh scored the winner uh, in leipzig in midweek is a nuisance and with jota out he seems like the most like I, I think liverpool just go for it right that has to be their mentality here and almost just smell blood in the water a little bit when it comes to playing arsenal at the moment Yeah, I agree with you. I think it does have to be that way. Um, I look back to last season, and I do think that Liverpool were fairly unlucky. There was a period of time when we were discussing them as what tournaments can they win or what can they do to to put Jurgen. Remember, that was like the thread of this is Jurgen Klopp's last time. Wouldn't it be fitting if they did this? So what was their issue last year? Well, they didn't address the midfield early enough to flow. Uh, meaning the year before when they should have addressed it, they still were the dangerous team in the league, more dangerous than Man City. They just allowed a lot of goals. So when everybody comes back to you and says, well, you know, it's not quite the same, which it isn't. It's not quite the same, but they do have control. Most teams in the world would rip your arm off (laughs) if you offered them total control of a game. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I I don't know. it's hard to, given what we've seen from Arsenal over the years, it really is hard to say Liverpool, you know, that they're there already. But when you only were away for a year, is can we really say it's that big of a surprise? Yeah, and it, they're kind of the same, right? When I think about it, obviously, Gravenberg and Fabinho are very different players, but proper holder midfielders in this slot system, it works. You have now Curtis Jones, not there yet, but he's kind of taken on that Jordan Henderson number yeah. six, number eight role back and forward. And then you have Sobis I guess, is kind of like Vine Alden was for those few years under Klopp and like the go, midfield. Go further. Yeah. yeah. Nunez Firmino. They, yeah. Exactly. They found a way of reinventing themselves, but then also going back to what they know best. And they've got so many players who've been there for such a long time that you're right against Chelsea. Muscle memory kicked in. But what I loved is that. As soon as they went two one up, control. Let's keep yeah. it calm. Let's that's the, the extra layer and dimension to their play this season. So if they go ahead against Arsenal, I actually have full confidence that Liverpool aren't going to 
ship two or three goals on the counter and they will be a lot more relaxed. Andy, jump in, mate. Yeah, let, let me put a bow on all that and then I'll give you my prediction and okay. we can get out of here. Uh, the expectation for Liverpool is still to win Premier League title. The hope for Arsenal is still to win Premier League title. And those are just two very different mindsets mm -hmm. and mentalities because they've been there. They've done it before. Uh, most of them, you know, uh, the, the, the veteran yeah. group of players. But, but, but they have instilled in that, in that changing room that that is the expectation and the standard. And Arsenal are still just hoping to get there. And I think that kind of, uh, you know, uh, plays itself out a little bit uh, on the weekend. And so I'll go, I'll go with a very narrow... Um, Wide open, but narrow, close win for Liverpool. I'll go 1-0. Wow. Well, I'm going 2-1 Liverpool because I do think that Salah is in the form he's in. I just the attacking talent they have available. I trust them more than Arsenal's players who are going to start out wide, especially, to bury the chances they'll get. So I'm going to go 2-1 Liverpool. Nick? Well, I'm going to go with Liverpool as well, but I, I do want to say that a lot of it is we can't, and we're all, this is all in all of our predictions. I'm confident saying that we don't know if, if Saka is definitely not going to play yet. Correct. I yeah. mean, these are, there are too many key pieces that might not play that when you're making your prediction, you still have the yeah. ego of wanting to be right. Uh, that said, the only thing I think that could go against Liverpool is they were not fantastic at midweek even though they were electric against Wolves uh, and just only scored the two goals. When we see dips, they, they're they not just one game. So I think the first 15 minutes will be telling, but I'll go 2-1 as well. All right. Well, let's see if Arnie can say hasta la vista to uh, <laughs> Arsenal's title uh, hopes for this season. Head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for all the latest on this massive game, Arsenal against Liverpool in North London. We'll have you covered with live analysis, reaction and much more nick and andy thanks so much for joining me thanks everyone for watching enjoy the big game this weekend and we'll speak to you all very soon cheers guys hi there i'm rebecca lowe studio host of nbc's coverage of the premier league don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long and if you want even more premier league content from original series to live matches head over to peacock